crop for life, so the sower and the reaper may be glad together. This is the saying, one sows and another reaps is true. I've sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefit of their labor. So the Samaritan from the town believed in him because the woman's testimony and they and he told me, or the women's testimony was, he told me everything I ever did. And so when the Samaritans came, they urged Jesus, stay with him for another two days. We glorify you. We feel your presence in the house today. Who is like you? There is absolutely nobody. And I thank you that today you are drawing people to yourself. Come and see. Come and see that the Lord is good. Come and see. Come and drink from the well today. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm not known to be a long-winded preacher and when someone say, thank you, Jesus, because we got baptism and there's 30, 40 people getting baptized today. Pastor said 20, but people are going to get saved this morning and there are going to be more. I love that some of y'all got that, but we're declaring there was 20 something, but there are going to be more in the name of Jesus. We call you in, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is amazing. There's something about him that draws you in. When he speaks, his words are enticing. They're piercing, but they are comforting. They're convicting, but they give you hope. And you, when he speaks, you want to change, not because you're afraid of the punishment of hell, but because, you, because he's worth changing for. There's just something about Jesus. His name is sweeter than honey. He is the Prince of Peace. He is like no other God. When the two walked with Jesus after he resurrected and then they realized who he was, they said, did our hearts not burn when he was with us? When he speaks, your hearts are set ablaze because his eyes are like fire. His voice is like many waters. They would say of Jesus, we've never heard anyone speak with this kind of authority. Who is this man? He is perfect love. And when you encounter Jesus, you will never be the same again. The man that encountered Jesus out of legions of demons, they came out of him and he was never the same again. Bartimaeus, who was blind before, when he encountered Jesus, wasn't blind anymore. The man with a withered hand, it grew out, so you can't call him with a man with a withered hand anymore. You can call him grown out hand man. When you encounter Jesus, you're never the same. Paul or, or Saul wanted to kill Christians, encountered Jesus, and he turned to Paul and he was never the same. When you get touched by the glory and the power of Jesus, you're the same as the Samaritan woman. You say, come and see of the man who told me everything I've ever done because he's powerful. When you touch him, when he touches you, you'll never be the same again. This lady, she did not deserve Jesus to come encounter her. She was sinful. She was unclean. She was nasty. She was an adulterer. She did not deserve Jesus to encounter her. But he came and he touched her. And when he touched her and changed her life, she drank from the living water and it was an overflowing and she had to go tell of what he did. When he touches you, you can't be the same. When he touches you, you, there's something in you that's like, man, I'm grateful. I got to tell everybody about this. In 2001, believe it or not, I was an atheist. I didn't believe in Jesus. I was running hard from the Lord. And he came into my room when I didn't deserve it, when I was messed up, when I was drunk. He came into my room. His presence, Jesus, came in. And he touched me on the back and I encountered the living water. I came to the well. There was a well encounter right there in my room. And when I touched the hem of it, what, actually he touched me. He found me. And when he found me, I was never the same again. I was on my way to hell, but he changed my direction. I thought about doing everything else, but he changed my trajectory. He said, I've called you to be a man of God. I've called you to be a pastor. I've called you to introduce people to Jesus Christ. I've called people, I've called you to lift people up higher. 
So you can't be the same where you used to be. When you encounter him, it goes from glory to glory. When you encounter his presence, it goes to the next level. Is there anybody that can testify? I'm so, is there anybody that can testify that you did not deserve grace? You couldn't have earned it yourself? Where he met you, you should have been left there, but he swooped down into the gutter, into that place. Is there anyone that can say hell has lost another one? Man, you were quickly on your way to a hell, but Jesus came and rescued. He took your feet from the miry clay and set it upon the rock. If that's you, you ought to give God some praise right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know what bothers me when people come in and say he hadn't done much for me? And you, and you know what bothers me when we do worship? They're like, there's not much to worship for. Man, if he never does anything else for me ever again, if he never comes through for me again, if he never heals me, if he never saves me, he's done enough. He's done enough and I'll give him all the glory. I'm not mad at you. But if you won't praise him, the rocks will cry out. Where much was given, much was required. I'm telling you, if you see someone dancing a little crazy, it's because God brought them out of a lot of crazy. If you see someone worshiping extreme, it means that God brought them out of extreme. If you see someone stand there going, eh, thank you. They've always been saved. God hadn't done anything for them. You should feel sorry for them. I know it sounds uh, poetical and figurative the way that I'm saying that we had a well conversion, but let me just be absolutely literal. We were on our way to hell and Jesus rescued us. And when you come into his gates, you have to come with thanksgiving. You have to come with praise to enter into his courts. Psalm says that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. You thought that it was optional for you to praise? You haven't read the Bible or you went to a weird church. It's not optional. We got to praise. If you've got breath, he said praise. If you walked into a building today, you got to give him glory. You got to give him praise. Jesus said there's a time coming and is now here that people will worship in spirit and truth for God is a spirit and we must worship him in spirit and in truth. So you have to put off the flesh because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So you come in on a Sunday morning and you won't want to worship because of the heaviness that's on you. But he says that there's garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So a trade has to occur. In other words, you have to tell your flesh what it's gonna do. I'm preaching to a lot of people in the front. Am I talking to anybody in the back? Sometimes you gotta tell yourself, I'm coming to worship body line up, flesh line up with the spirit of God. We are going to worship. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He says, rejoice in the Lord always and everything give thanks. You gotta tell yourself spirit is in charge because we will worship and I will worship today. Are there any predetermined worshipers in here? Premeditated worshipers? You don't care what it sounds like, you don't care what it's like, you're going to worship. That spirit, you said I'm coming in and I'm gonna, I'm gonna spirit. See, the flesh wants the perfect song. The flesh wants the perfect environment. It wants the perfect condition. The flesh wants you to walk in and come into church and everything went right. You didn't argue with your wife before you walked in. Your kids were ready on time. You found the right outfit to wear so everyone knows you're cute. You have the right hairstyle. Your hair did perfect today and you look skinny in that dress. That's the way. 
everything's got to be right, but the flesh needs your emotions to be right, and it needs the right things. It needs the, uh, it requires an emotional response to proceed forward in worship. Because I don't feel like worshiping, I can't worship. So the flesh has, everything's got to line up so I can proceed forward. That's flesh, but the spirit. I said, but the spirit will respond to the Holy Spirit no matter what. The spirit will respond to the Holy Spirit no matter what. It don't matter how your week went. It doesn't matter what happened five minutes ago. It doesn't matter if someone cussed you out as you walked in. It doesn't matter if they pulled in to the parking spot before you could pull into the parking spot. When your spirit sees his spirit, there is something that comes alive and you've got to respond and say, Jesus, you are worthy. You're worthy of it all. The spirit doesn't seek the feeling of worship, it responds to him. It's our deepest yearning, it is what we were created for. It's more than a goosebump, it's not an emotional high, it's not a flesh thing, it's deeper. It's a spirit thing. It's the deep crying out to deep thing. It's when you cry and you're groaning that you don't understand, but your spirit is groaning and the Holy Spirit understands what you are groaning about and the Holy Spirit knows what you're, you're praying about and he can minister to that place. Things you don't know how to say, things you don't know how to worship, things you, you just begin to groan in the Spirit and he responds. And worship is like this, that sometimes you walk in and it's like a fire shut up in your bones. Nobody has to prime you. Nobody has to prep you. And you walk in and you're like, boom, 100% wide open. It seemed like you drank Red Bull and coffee and it was awesome. <laughs> wide open like a fire. And people are like, you're like, they're like, how are you doing? Oh, I'm great. Woo! <laughs> Ready to go. It's like a fire shut up in my, I can't wait to worship. You're the, you're the person that showed up when, during the practice. You're here at nine o'clock, ready to go. You worship before the worship even starts while they're practicing he's like hey we're gonna do a five chord on that one you're like glory to God I feel his presence it's like a fire shut up in your bones sometimes it's an overflow out of your belly like rivers flowing like waters flowing and then there are times you've got to say come on my soul don't you get shy on me now Come on, come on, flesh. Line up. He's worthy. You've got to tell your body, submit to God. Resist the devil. Resist the urge to, to just blend in. Resist the urge to be normal. Resist the urge not to make a sound because your sound is important. Your worship is important. Nobody can worship like you can worship. I believe that every person was created to make a sound of worship. You may not be the greatest singer, but when we sing together, have y'all heard that when, every, when the stage stops singing and the crowd begins to sing together? It is beautiful. And you may individually not have a good voice, but when you join in the unison of heaven and creation designed to do what we're supposed to do, it is beautiful. Your voice matters, your worship matters. We, were, we talked about this, and I wasn't gonna say anything about this, but Friday night we talked about letting God arise and every enemy be scattered. And I was like, all of us love that verse. Everybody loves that verse. Yeah, that's a great verse. Keep reading. He says that you have to make a shout, a loud shout of worship, a loud sound of worship. So it's not just going, he's let, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Yeah. You can declare that all you want till you step into what he said to do. Worship loudly. He ain't gonna scatter. God isn't gonna, you've got to, there's principles. Does everyone understand that? Okay, let's go back to the word. And sometimes you gotta say, I'm bringing the sacrifice of praise. 
Sometimes it's not just pushing through the crowd, it's pushing through your own anxiety. It's pushing through your own issues. It's pushing through the weight of the world. And sometimes you just got to push through. And this is where truth comes in. Because we were in spirit a moment ago, now we're in truth because you don't feel like worshiping because things are heavy, things are hard. And the Lord just wants you to be honest. This is where you say, I believe, but help my unbelief. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're guilty. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. This is where you say, Lord, there is a mountain in front of me, but you're the mountain mover. Lord, I'm carrying this burden, but Jesus said that we could cast all burdens on you. I'm sick, but you're the healer. Everything has gone wrong, but I keep my eyes on you because you're where my help comes from. That's worship. That's truth worship because you're saying what's happening, but you're stepping over what's happening into who he is. I may feel this way. I might not feel to worship, but I choose to see things your way. That's truth. Jesus, I don't feel it, but you're worthy. This is where you give God access to all of you. The Bible says in Revelations that we'll, there'll be people that stand before God and he'll say, depart from me. And he'll, they'll be like, well, I, I cast out devils in your name. I healed the sick in your name. I raised the dead in your name. They knew, they knew of Jesus. But then Jesus says, depart from me. I never knew. Have you ever thought about that? He didn't say, you didn't know me. He said, I never knew you. If you want to get to know somebody and they won't hang out with you, you don't know them. They haven't made themselves available to you. And we come to Jesus and that fake. But on the inside, there's turmoil. On the inside, you know that there's sin issues. On the inside, you know that he wants to get in there, but you won't let him know you. And this is where truth says, Lord, every room, every, every part, the dirty part, the dark part, the disappointment part, the place where I haven't trusted in you, I'm giving it all to you today. That's truth worship. And I say you're worthy. And you might see somebody this morning or in a church service, worship extreme, dance extreme, and you need to be careful because I said it earlier, but they might be fighting something big. They might be going through something big and they have understood that your worship is a weapon. And if you'll give God a worship, he has something to work with. If you're going through stuff and you don't worship, there's nothing to work with. But when you're going through a storm and you can worship anyway, God says, I'll work with that little that you've got. And your little might be, you were on the ground, but your little might just be like, I'm just gonna stand. That's all I can do, God says, I'll work with it. All I can do is just say, hallelujah. He'll work with that hallelujah. You're broken, you're lonely, you're down, but he can work with it if you would open your mouth and say, Jesus, I don't feel like it, but you're worthy. I don't wanna praise you, but you are worthy, Jesus. Give him something to work with and not only give him something to work with, confuse the enemy's camp. The enemy thought you, he had you on the ropes, but you're still saying thank you. He thought you were defeated, but you're still saying God is good. He thought that he had you crushed, persecuted, but you say, I'm not abandoned because God is with me. Give him something to work with. And you gotta be careful when you are, when, you're, when you're, everything's good for you, you gotta be careful to judge how people are worshiping because Judas loved to judge how people were worshiping and he let Satan into his heart. I thought of another example, Miriam, in the Bible was, have y'all remember, there's like songs, I will sing the song that Miriam sang. She wrote songs to Jesus, she danced before the Lord. This is Moses' sister. She was a worshiper, she danced, she knew how to get into the throne, she knew how to do all those things. She's probably an intercessor. She was them, them, them weird ladies that, you know, um, if you do that, I love you, you're, you're not weird. <clears throat> she was all up in it. 
But I believe that there are a lot of people like Miriam in the room today that you've done church so long that you've become cynical. And she became cynical of the man of God, her brother Moses. Read it. She was upset that he married the wrong woman, but then she started saying stupid stuff like, is he the only one that hears from God? Be careful that while you're worshiping, that you don't become cynical. You might have been on the right path for years, but then all of a sudden you became that cynical, judgmental person that talks about everybody that's up here and talks about everybody around you. I just wanna say be careful who you talk about because God doesn't like it. In fact, God called Miriam, Abraham, and Aaron, and he said, come out here right now. And this is like a dad rebuking children. He said, come stand before me. And they all stand and they're going, oh my gosh, what did we do? And he, and he looked at Miriam and Abram. I don't like the way that y'all been talking about my servant Moses. Don't you know that that's my guy? That's my boy, that's my man. I talked to everybody else in dreams. I talked to people through prophets, but I talked directly to Moses. How dare you talk to him, about him? And all she did was say, is he the only one that hears? <laughs> the very little criticisms that you put on God's people he hears those things. You gotta be careful. This is just good teaching. I'm not mad at anybody. Hadn't heard anything. I love you. You're like, why is he so mad at me? I'm not mad at you. I love you. I'm just saying be careful because God was gonna put leprosy on her, her entire life. And Moses was like, hey, um, she just messed up a little. Can we give her some grace? And God said, all right, seven days, that's it. So she had to go outside the camp for seven days and then she could come back. Be careful. If you find yourself critical or judgmental today, you probably need a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit. Because when he touches you, you can't go back to what you used to be. When he touches you, it's a flowing river. Your life will never be the same. When, he touched, when you're touched by God, you don't talk the same, you don't walk the same, you don't act the same. You're not who you used to be. Do y'all know that the reason that Jesus encountered this lady, um, the, the Samaritan woman at the well at an odd hour was because she was trying to avoid people? Y'all know that? Does everyone know that? She was ashamed of what she's been doing. So she's trying to avoid people. And she's getting water at the hottest time of day to avoid all them people that she used to be friends with because all of them know she's hooking up with everybody. So she's coming in a private time. Whew, Jesus, help me say this and let it be in as impactful as it was to me, as it to them. I mean, hallelujah, good. But once she encountered Jesus and once she tasted the living water, she started to overflow with his love and the people that she hid from, she could not help but minister to. If you're ashamed to talk to people about Jesus, you need a drink of the living water. If you can't talk to your coworkers, wow. Uh, if you can't talk to your coworkers about Jesus, you need a drink of the living water. If you, can't, if you bump into somebody at the gas station, you can't say anything, you need a drink of the living water because once he comes on you, once he's touched you, the real, the real thing, and, and some of y'all were that, you had that, you just need a fresh touch because the fresh touch of living water makes you be like, woo, I gotta say something about what he just did to me because it's not just on you, it is flowing through you. And you're like, everywhere you go, wow. Jesus is awesome. And you're not annoying, it's the living water flowing through you and people like it because they can feel the living water coming up off of you. Jesus said in John chapter four, this is the same passage, he said the harvest is plentiful. And he says that you will reap where you did not sow. And Jesus proved it as the late to the disciples. He's, he's telling them, we're gonna, we're gonna reap where you hadn't sowed and he proves it. 
This lady gets saved and she goes out immediately and tells the town and she reaped the harvest that she didn't work for. All she said was, come and see. There's a guy that told me everything I've ever done. And that same power that drew her to Jesus is now in her and the power in her is what is drawing the crowd. Her words, I met a man that told me everything I ever done is not convincing enough on itself. Think about that. The words, hey, come and see. I met a man that told me everything I ever did. They'll be like, okay. It's not the words, but the words were laced with living water. And I believe that the town had been prepped beforehand by the Holy Spirit. Hearts began to melt. And when she spoke, living water coming out of her because living water had encountered her and living water was in her and living water was flowing through her and living waters laced and were on top of her words that when she began to speak, the thing that was already in their heart recognized what she was saying because deep does call out to deep. And when they recognize that what you're saying is spirit and life, they cannot resist. And you could say it as simple as come and see. If it is laced with the glory of God, they will come and they will see. Stop worrying about what you will say. Open your mouth and let the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit say it for you. Because it won't matter what you say, it matters who is saying it out of you. And the town was prepped. And I believe right now, God is setting people up in Lebanon and Wilson County, wherever you go. He is setting people up to be saved. He's prepping their hearts. He's giving them dreams, he's giving them visions. They are ready, they're ripe. There's a harvest ready to be brought in that you did not labor for. And just like Philip walking down the road and he overhears the eunuch talking about or reading the scriptures, he's like, whoa, hey, I heard you reading the scriptures. You need someone to explain that to you? You will begin to hear conversations and questions and the Lord is gonna set up divine appointments to, for you. And you may not have any clue of what to say, but you've been dipped in the living water and it won't matter what you say because the living water is what's coming out. Verse 42, I'm almost done. We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man is really the savior of the world. Come and see, come and see. I can tell you of his goodness and his mercy and his grace. That's not good enough. You need to come and see. Come and see that God is good. Today, I believe that there are people that are here that it is not by accident. You may have been going to church here a hundred years. That would be longer than I've been here. Or this might be your first time coming into the building. It's not an accident that you're here. God drew you this morning. He's saying, stop being so critical and come drink some water. He's saying, stop being so judgmental and come drink some water. He's saying, are you ashamed of me to talk about me? Come drink some living water. And then I believe that there are some people that came in. You thought you just come to see someone be baptized. But he knew every moment and he's laced every part of the service with his presence. And you felt the living water drawing. You felt the power pulling on you. And his name is Jesus. Come and see. Come and see. He is good. Come and see. He is good. Would you stand with us today? Pastor's going to come. Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. You're worthy of all the glory and all the honor. The invitation is simple to come and see, to come and drink of the living water today. We bless you.
in this holy moment. Eloquent words won't convince anyone. But what comes forth today, what you heard today, I believe as you put it, was laced with the glory of God, with living water. And if you say today, I am thirsty, like that woman said, listen, I've come here, but give me the water you're talking about. Give me some of that water that's able to change me. And we saw her change. We see her running back. A few hours before, nobody could have cared less what she had to say. But when the glory of God is on you, they can't resist. They, it's impossible to resist because it doesn't matter the words. It matters who speaks those words through you. So the Holy Spirit is tugging on your heart. You know where you are. You know who you are. Don't resist. But just say, Lord, I'm thirsty. I'm coming for a drink. I want living water in my mouth, in my life. If that's you today, find a place up here. Push through the crowd. This lady came in to that place in an odd hour. We heard it said. We know this. But boy, what an appointment. Because there was someone waiting for her. I believe there's someone here waiting for you. His name is Jesus. The Holy Spirit is waiting. Would you come and say, Lord, give me that water that I thirst no more. As we worship the Lord, I want you to come from the back, from the front, the middle, whoever you are. If you've been saved two days or 200 days or whatever that may be, it doesn't matter, months or years. We need a fresh drink of the Holy Spirit. That is you and I. Come on quickly. Come and get a drink. Get a drink. Get a drink. Don't deny. Don't say, Lord, no. I... Listen, if he said, if you knew who it was offering you this water, you would have asked him. So right now he's offering. Take a hold of it. He's offering a cup to you. Would you take the cup? Would you take the water? Oh, come on somebody, quickly, in Jesus' name. Push out from the crowd. Push out from the middle. I know somebody said, well, I wish if, if they would just let me out. They will. Come on. They'll move for you. They'll come with you. Whatever that is, just don't go home thirsty. Don't go home thirsty again. Don't go home with the, with the same issue, the same problem. It can be changed today right here right now by the spirit of god thank you holy spirit let's just worship for a moment let's just worship for a moment hallelujah hallelujah come on hands lifted high this is my hour this is my day i will thirst no more he said if you drink from the waters that i give you you'll never thirst again that's the kind of water that I'm after, that Holy Spirit with on the inside of us. Come on, push in. People are pressing in. People are pressing in. Is there someone else? God is tugging on your heart. He's tugging on your heart. He's touching you right now. You know you've been thirsty. You know there's a drought. You know you've been in that drought, in that famine. But I'm ready for some fresh refreshing in my life. If that's you, the invitation is for you right now. There is a pool. He says, come and see. Come and see. Come and taste. Taste that the Lord is good. Taste that the Lord is good. They're still coming. They're still coming. Somebody give God praise. Give God praise in the house. People are pressing. Would you take two steps forward? Those that are here, two steps forward. Just two forward if you'll. Others are coming behind you right now. Is there somebody? Come on, we want to belay this for a moment because we know the importance of it. We know how it is when you're dry and barren and empty and dry. But today is offering living waters that will refresh your life, that will change your life. Thank you, Lord. You talk about truth. This Robin minister here on Wednesday, what a powerful word of truth. A truth that will set you free. I'm going to know when you hear truth, it will set you free. It will bring life. It will bring hope. Thank God for that. So we receive from your hand right now, Lord Jesus. We receive right now. We receive right now. Andrew, would you lead people, those that don't know the Lord, those that need a refreshing, those that need that drink so desperately. Oh, you know, even in the natural, I've, I've seen people who, who, who have been, you know, th th that addiction they've had for something.
If it was for alcohol, there comes a time and a period. I've been around people long enough that, 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 that they get shaky. They, they, they go through with all. They just got to get that drink. I got to get that drink. And, and nothing can stop them. May the same tenacity, may the same thing be upon you. But not for that natural, but for the supernatural. That you will do whatever it takes. You'll move people aside. You'll press in. I've got to have a drink. I'm not going home dry. I'm not going home empty. I'm not going home the same. If I could be changed today, today is that day. Come on in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're watching at home or wherever you are today, here's an invitation for you to come and drink as well. Would you say this prayer with me? Would you say, dear Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. I come to you today to drink of the living water. Thank you for setting me free from the opinions of people. I will worship you. I will share of your goodness. I will share of what you've done for me. You are amazing. And I believe you are the Messiah. You are the Christ. Blessings to you forever and ever. Amen. Come on, give God praise today. Give God praise today. Hallelujah. I've, I had a, just before the service, I just closed my eyes and I had a vision of a, a person taking a heroin needle and injecting it in between their toes. And I said, Lord, who is that? And uh, somebody, your, your name is either Gloria or you go by Gloria or something like that, or it's your nickname. I just wanna say that the Lord will set you free today. And it could be right, it could be watching Gloria, whatever it is. If that's you sticking that needle between your toes, and the reason you did that is because you were afraid of what people would think about you, seeing it on your arms or wherever else. But the Lord's gonna set you free today in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare it right now, freedom by the anointing. You called it out, Holy Spirit, so we declare your freedom in it in Jesus' name. If that's you, I want you to find me after the service. Or if that's you, I need you to email the church, write to the church, because there's a confession part that needs to happen for that breakthrough to be complete. Hallelujah. If you are here in the altar area, I'd like for you to hang out as long as you can. We've got a prayer team that's going to come around and pray for you. But we're going to baptize people today. It's going to be awesome. So if you want to join in in baptism and you're like, I didn't bring anything. They got some, they got you hooked up. They got extra clothes. They got towels up there. So today, just like that, there was a man that was his, it was a eunuch from the African. And he just said, what hinders me from being baptized right now? And so Philip baptized him right then. And so I want to say to you, if, if you're like, man, Nothing's going to stop me from following God all the way today. I want you to, I want you to, women are going to go this door and men, you're going to go into this door here. And if you've already signed up to, ba to be baptized, men, would you go ahead and, men, would you go ahead and go to this side? If you've already decided to sign up, you've already signed up the children that are going, go ahead and enter into this door. Women, please go ahead and enter into this door. And if you want to join them, go do that as well. And those of you that are up here for living water, just hang out. Our prayer team is gonna come and pray for you. Would you come, prayer team? And those that are just waiting, would you just wait for us just for a little bit? If you need to sit down to wait, that's fine. We're not, we're not gonna judge the way you're waiting. If you need to sit down or if you wanna come, just stretch your hand forward, we invite you to do that. You can worship Caleb. There is none like
baptism. We just give you the praise and the glory. They not ashamed to share this great news with everybody, the whole world. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Come on, let's celebrate together. Jesus in your heart, and you're going to follow him all the days of your life. That's a yes. Give the Lord a hand praise. Give us your name. Parker. Say it again. Parker. Say hi, Parker. Hi, Parker. <laughs> Parker, you're ready to, to, to follow Jesus in baptism? <coughs> and you've given your heart to him? Follow him all the days of your life? Yeah? That's good for me. <laughs> I'm going to ask Brother Donnie to baptize him today. And we're going to stand with you. God's got great things for him. Would you do that, sir? Come stand up here. Would you tell us your name? Stella. Stella. <laughs> so Stella, you have decided to follow Jesus, right? That's awesome. How old are you, Stella? Twelve. Twelve. Do you have anything else that you want to share with us? All right. But Jesus is your Lord, right? You're going to follow him every day for the rest of your life. That's awesome. <laughs> so, okay. You can put your hand on your nose. And so Stella... Upon the profession of your faith in Jesus, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Upon the profession of your faith in Jesus, 
I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Could you tell us your name? Greenlee. Greenlee. That's a beautiful name. How old are you, Greenlee? Ten. Ten? That's awesome. And you have decided to follow Jesus and be baptized just like Jesus was baptized. That's awesome. Do you have anything else you want to share? Okay. You're just in love with Jesus. You're passionate for him. You're following him. That's awesome. Okay. If you'll put your hand on your nose. Okay. And Greenlee, upon the profession of your faith in Jesus... And I'll baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
you share your name with us? What is your name? Branson. Branson, and how old are you, Branson? Six. Six years old, that's awesome. And you're gonna follow Jesus in baptism today? Is he the Lord of your life? You're just gonna follow whatever he says, right? That's so great. Do you have anything else you wanna share? Okay. Okay, so Branson, we're gonna put you right here. You're getting baptized today with your brother. Are you also getting baptized? Oh, oh, that's perfect. So mom is just here as a support. That's awesome. Okay, Branson, if you'll put your hand on your nose. Okay. And so upon the profession of your faith in Jesus, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So could you tell us your name? Lily. Lily. And how old are you, Lily? Ten. Ten. That's awesome. And you've decided to follow Jesus for all of your life, and you're going to follow him in baptism for them. That's cool. Do you have anything else you want to share? You just love Jesus, right? Uh -huh. Awesome. Oh, so, okay, Lily, you can cover your nose. And upon the profession of your faith in Jesus, I now baptize. Graham, everybody, give God a bless you for Graham. Graham, how old are you? Ten, perfect ten. And so today, as a minister beside us, who we've known for a long time, sir, I'm going to give you the honor of baptizing your son. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes, sir. Come on. your name? Olivia. Olivia. How old are you? Eight. Yeah. She's going on. She's eight. And she's going on 12 or 14. And that's her little brother that was just baptized. Do you love Jesus? You're going to follow him all the days of your life? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I'm going to ask your daddy to baptize you today. Olivia, as you 
profess your faith today in Jesus, that you're going to live through him, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. wonderful to see our children wanting to be baptized, surrendering their hearts to the Lord at an early age. Isn't that amazing? So we thank God for that. Amen. That he may keep us. Go ahead, Lane. Okay. That's me. Okay. Can you tell us your name? Amaya. Amaya. And how old are you, Amaya? Thirteen. Thirteen years old. That's awesome. And you love Jesus? Yes, sir. Are you passionate about him? Yes, sir. That's amazing. And you decided to follow him today in baptism? Yes, sir. So great. And he's the Lord of your life? Yes, sir. Do you have anything else you want to share? No, sir. Okay, well, congratulations. So, Amaya, upon the profession of your faith in Jesus, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. you and see you and pray and bless God for you. Amen. Would you give us your name? Pamela. This is Pamela. Pamela, have you received Jesus into your heart? Yes, sir. And you want to follow him all yes, the days sir. of your life? Yes, sir. Ready for baptism? Yes, sir. Amen. What, tell us what God has done for you. He good. <laughs> I thank God for saving me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank God for his goodness. Thank, thank you for his amazing grace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I think she's ready for baptism Thank today. You. Look this way for me. Put your hand over the whole nose. Of the profession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that you've decided to follow him all the days of your life, we are honored to baptize you today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Aquila. And so today you've decided to follow Jesus and to publicly let everybody know. Yes, sir. That's awesome. Yes, sir. He's the Lord of your life. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's awesome. Do you have anything else you want to share, Aquila? I just want to thank him for bringing me back to my faith. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. He's still loving me. Yes. Yeah. And he's so faithful. So good. Okay. Well, let's, let's back up. That's it. If you'll cover your nose. Aquila, because of your profession of faith in Jesus, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. share your name with us? Emily. Emily. And uh, how old are you, Emily? 22. 22. That's awesome. And you've decided to follow Jesus for all of your life, that he's the Lord of your life? Yes. Yes. And today you're being baptized yeah. just like he was. Yes. That's awesome. Is there anything else you want to share, Emily? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> okay, so if you'll turn this way and cover your nose. So Emily, today because you confess Jesus as your Lord, I now baptize you in the name of the Father. Come on. 
only just give Jesus one more praise. Give him one more praise. Come on, somebody. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Well, we're so proud of these guys. And keep on praying for them. That God would sustain them in the days and the months and the years to come. That they will continue to follow the Lord and walking after him. We bless you. Thank you for staying with us and blessing this day. We love you. God bless you. Amen. Caleb, you got one more song in you? You already pulled everything back? Maestro back there. When you do, God bless you, everyone. Amen. Amen. Remember next week, baby dedication. It's going to be awesome. We love you. Shalom.